And now let's focus on hardware architecture. Autonomous drones need to be smart and also able to perform real-time operation. Let's see that in detail. So the flight controller is in charge of the real-time aspect of the drone. For example, a quadcopter needs to balance the four motor. It has to be done very quickly, constantly. You can't pause the balancing and without interruption. That's why this task is managed by microcontroller. Uh, on microcontroller has limited processing power, but it has a deterministic behavior. That's the way it is built. So you can be sure it will run your software in time. It is real-time. The compute board is in charge of the smart part of the drone. So if you need to, your drone to follow a simple GPS path, a microcontroller is enough. But if you want to, your drone to be autonomous, you need to avoid a collision, uh, you need to perform computer vision to communicate with IP-based network like internet. So you'll need a compute board, typically running Linux. This board will be connected to a sensor like Intel RealSense, run complex software stack and interact with the network. This type of heavy computation is usually done, not in real time. To summarize, there's a clear separation of tasks in an autonomous drone platform. Simple real time computation are managed by the flight controller, that is, using a simple microcontroller. And complex computation and interaction with the smart sensor are managed by the compute board, that is, running a smart processor like Intel Atom. So it is a very typical architecture for autonomous drone, and by working on Intel Aero, you develop durable and interoperable skills. There's a lot of misunderstanding regarding the balancing of computing inside a smart uh, drone, so let's talk about the compute architecture of autonomous drones. Let's look at the historical trend in the computer industry. First, we have some uh, PCs on server, so they have a centralized and generic computing resource. So it could be an Intel architecture CPU, and the only exception would be the addition of a GPU to perform a 3D task. In the mobile world, it's different. You have a lot of dedicated chips uh, for each part of the mobile uh, computing device. For example, you have a modem, you have a small uh, image processing unit to help you take some pictures, and there is a CPU, of course, on a GPU, and a few other things. So it's a lot of small parts glued together. In HPC, it is, again, something totally different. You have a lot of uh, parallel on specific computing, for example, a CPU or GPU, but they are very small, and there's a lot of them, and they are all working in parallel. So in terms of illustration, you have a, a modern CPU on the left from Intel. In the middle, you have a typical uh, mobile uh, uh, platform, system on chip. And on the right, uh, you have a server-based parallel architecture. Based on all this history, we are making a proposal for autonomous drone at Intel. Our proposal is to have a central generic computing for logic and custom code. So that would be the Hero uh, compute board, uh, having a, an Atom processor. So it's a tablet class processor. And around this compute board, we will have decentralized specific computing for 3D sensing, for example, Intel RealSense, uh, computer vision with Movidius chip, potentially a radio with a LT modem, it's quite typical for autonomous drone, and you can even add a FPGA. We are definitely not trying to put all the computation on a single CPU or GPU that will do absolutely everything that is uh, needed for the drone. We try to keep the architecture a bit like mobile platforms. In terms of communication, you have two typical topologies. First one is a peer-to-peer. -peer. So it can be a Wi-Fi based peer-to-peer. -peer. 
for example, uh, consumer IP-based remote control drones uh, act as a hotspot and you connect your mobile device to the drone and you are on a local network between your mobile device and the drone. So it's usually uh, good for consumer drones. It can even be optimized with a long range Wi-Fi. Uh, you can stream HD video, you can do a lot of nice things. The second very typical um, topology is to have a radio, simple radio, peer-to-peer. Uh, -peer. So that's having a radio receiver on your drone and having a remote control with you. So it's great if you need low latency, but that's pretty much it. It is not IP best. The second type of topology is to have a centralized uh, topology. So first you can try with a Wi-Fi because we have a Wi-Fi chip on Aero, uh, but you can't go really far. It's, it's great for ease of development, but it's not meant to be used in production over long distances. So don't try to extend the range of Wi-Fi uh, to long distances. That's not the point. Because what most professional developers would do is plug a LT modem on Intel Aero and take advantage of mobile networks. That way you have very, very long range. You can uh, be in Australia and pilot your drone in France. There is no problem. It goes through internet anyway. So there is no distance limitation anymore. And it's important to understand that drones flying in the same space do not require peer-to-peer -peer radio communications to be able to fly safely. Only a centralized mobile-based communication system is scalable and will allow all the drones to fly and share the, the sky. So it, for Aero itself, uh, we have a M.2 professional uh, port, so you can plug a M.2 uh, LTE modem in it uh, from Intel or from other companies. It is really an industry standard. To summarize, Intel Aero is built from the best known methods. Uh, it is proposing a compute architecture that is both flexible and very powerful. And it is a great platform to develop your skill as it is based on standard and you can reuse your skills later to build your own drone or to move to other systems.